Hello everyone and welcome to Restorative Health Solutions. If you understand what's making you sick, then you can start to understand how to get better. More information is power. Hello, I'm Dr. Warren. Today we're going to talk about Lyme disease and co-infections. Of all the topics we talk about, this is right up there on some of the very most important things about both understanding why you're sick with Lyme disease and understanding how to fix it. You see, the vast majority of people with Lyme disease do not just have Borrelia or Borrelia burgdorferi. It's coupled and paired with co-infections, which are other infections that ticks carry that are not just Lyme disease. And it's the combination of these infections in each individual that makes a big difference in your care. Let's dive in. When we look at ticks, we call them nature's dirty needle. And this is because they are blood-sucking organisms that uh, will go on any mammal. They'll go on dogs, they'll go on horses, they'll go on deer, they'll go on squirrel. They'll go on any different mammal to get a blood meal as part of their life cycle. And anything that directly feeds on blood, we know, can carry a multitude of pathogens. Now, while the most famous of this is Lyme, there's a host of other infections that they carry. And particularly, what we find is when people are chronically sick from Lyme, over 93% of people who are chronically sick from Lyme have co-infections, meaning the Lyme is very rarely alone. It is much more commonly coupled with these co-infections. Now, what are the top co-infections that we see with Lyme disease? Well, they are Babesia, Bartonella, Anaplasma, Ehrlichia rickettsia, Mycoplasma, and a host of flaviviruses, mainly tick-borne encephalitis virus and flavivirus. Now, why is it such a big deal to know about these co-infections and to make sure your doctor isn't just testing you for Lyme, but is testing you for these co-infections? Well, there's a couple different reasons that this is so important. First and foremost, each of these bugs has a strategy that it's using to evade or circumvent your immune system. And you need to know what bugs you have so you can help be more specific in what you're doing to help your immune system fight these. So for example, Lyme disease really is known to hinder natural killer cell activity. And so part of helping to heal from Lyme is improving natural killer cell activity. Another thing that Bartonella does, it doesn't hinder natural killer cells, it hampers the nitric oxide system. So when you have Bartonella, we need to help the nitric oxide system and the Th17 side of the immune system becomes dysfunctional very frequently with Bartonella. So it breaks a different part of the immune system. And this is going to be a common theme. Each of these bugs breaks a different piece of your immune system. And I think many people just think of their immune system as one thing, when really it's many components. Think about it as an army. We've got tanks, we've got boats, we've got guns, we've got missiles, we've got different wings of the immune system. And each co-infection uniquely kind of suppresses and inhibits a different part of that immune system, thus giving each person with different combinations a very unique profile. So for example, Babesia, which is the most common co-infection, it suppresses the B cells or the adaptive immune system, a different part than Lyme and a different part than Bartonella. Now, anaplasma is known to inhibit neutrophils, your big bacteria fighters. Ehrlichia and rickettsia inhibit macrophages. And different bugs basically hurt your immune system in different ways. And so if you know what bugs you have, we can be more specific with the type of immune support you're doing. And that's why knowing what you have and running good testing, not just for Lyme, but also especially for Bartonella and Babesia, the most common, but also a host of the others. The anaplasma, rickettsia, mycoplasma, and viruses all make a big difference in how you're going to help your body recover from Lyme and these co-infections, this chronic tick-borne illness. Another thing we can look at when dealing with these chronic infections is symptom clusters. So certain symptoms make us suspicious of some bugs over the other. For example, Lyme is famous for a migrating, moving pain. It's also famous for a pressure vice-like headache. Now, Babesia is famous for night sweats and more of a migraine-type headache. 
It's also famous for its shortness of breath. Bartonella is famous for foot pain, uh, more psychological brain problems, eye floaters, and a lot of chest or heart symptoms. Oftentimes, my people with Bartonella have been to the emergency room and had that checked out. It often comes back normal, which confuses doctors like so many other tick-borne illnesses. Now, while I just said that, I will give you a warning because there is a lot of overlap. All three of these bugs cause fatigue. Babesia can cause shortness of breath. Bartonella can cause mast cell activation, but so can Babesia, and so can Anaplasma, and so can Rickettsia. And Mycoplasma can cause brain symptoms, and pain, and fatigue. And so there are some symptoms that we do think are a little more hallmark or famous for certain conditions. Bartonella can cause skin marks or streaks that look like stretch marks, for example. There are certain symptoms that are fairly hallmark, but there is a lot of crisscross and overlap, and it can be confusing when you're going on symptoms alone. That's why while recording symptoms and tracking them is important, we strongly, strongly suggest you run very accurate testing, not only for Lyme, but for co-infections. That's how we do it at our clinic, so you can know what you're fighting. Now, the last reason, as we try to wrap up here that I think is so important for Lyme and co-infections is we're really looking at the root cause of these issues being bugs and infections. We have to help your body at a core level. And it is unlikely that you will beat all these bugs simultaneously. For example, I had a patient yesterday who is better. He's recovered. He's living life and he's doing so much better. When we started, he had three different infections, Lyme, Bartonella, and a Rickettsia. He did not beat all three of these at the same time. So this is why also we not, not just testing, but retesting is so important and often overlooked. I can't tell you how many people I've found who are halfway through a program with a practitioner, and because they're not really testing and tracking what they're doing, they don't actually understand they're making progress. So if you have two or three things, you may find if you're not feeling well, you retest, you actually made progress. You beat one of them, you're still fighting the other one. And this is also where knowing how many things you have can help set your expectations about how long it might take you to get better and track you along the way. If you come into my office and you only have one or two things, we suspect you will go faster than someone who has maybe four or six things. Someone who's been bit by multiple ticks or who has multiple things is almost always more complicated and slower than someone who just has one or two things. So knowing the rate we kind of expect you to get better, being able to track which ones get better and which ones you're stuck on help you make adjustments when you're three months in, six months in, nine months in, 12 months into a program. And knowing how to make adjustments over time is the difference between success and failure for so many of my patients. And the biggest single factor that's helping me adjust is knowing which bugs I'm fighting is a thorough Lyme and co-infection test. There's certainly other immune system tests we can run, different inflammatory markers or immune cell markers that can be done. But one of the biggest, probably the single biggest thing that's factoring into what we're doing is what bugs is your immune system fighting and what is it not fighting anymore? And tracking that is the number one way to help yourself recover from not just Lyme, meaning the singular Lyme Borrelia burgdorferi, but when we say Lyme chronically, 93% of the time we mean Lyme and co-infections. I'm Dr. Warren. I hope you found this video helpful. If you need help with a personalized approach that's based on your system, your co-infections, and built uniquely, not just a generalized approach, we'd love to help you. Thank you.